It's amazing what a difference a day can make. This is what the earnings forecast for Lincoln National Corp looked like yesterday before they reported their earnings. As you can see, analysts were expecting $8.14 of earnings versus eight twenty that they earned last year with just a slight 1% drop. But they were expecting negative earnings. However, once the company reported earnings, we ended up with a minus $4 in losses because the company decided to make some massive write-offs on their earnings numbers and take it all in, in one sum. And the stock, as you can see, dropped 33%. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. And I'm doing a special request video here because um, I thought it was interesting to do it. The reason I'm doing it, I had I was asked by a commenter to take a look at Lincoln National. And if you all followed it, the company is a, obviously a, a um, um, life and health insurance company. And yesterday, their stock dropped 33% by the close after they announced earnings that were basically generating a significant loss. They were expecting positive earnings of about eight dollars and fourteen cents and they ended up generating um, what you know what now are estimated to be a four dollar loss for the year, but I think their earnings were down like twelve dollars and I'll get into that here in a moment. I do want to say to you, I don't know a lot about this company. It's not a company I follow. I do have some insurance companies that I like to follow, Prudential and MetLife specifically. This is not one that I've spent a lot of research on. It's kind of complicated. I would suggest you go through their earnings transcript. You can find that on places like um, um, Seeking Alpha, or you can find it on their website with even slides. But you can go into websites like Seeking Alpha and you know find their earnings transcript and go ahead and read their earnings transcript. It's a it's you know there's a lot of information there, but I think what you'll find is there's a lot of moving parts to this company. And it's relatively difficult to follow. So I, by far and away, I'm going to tell you that I'm not an expert here, but I am, you know, going to give you what I see on the fast graph tool now. So earnings, as you can see, we're rocking along, you know, pretty nicely. You know, they earned an 820 last year, and they were expected to be down a little bit this year, but you know, but so far, you know, this third quarter report came in, and the company really got got killed and the stock fell 30%. Now, the question is, looking at it from a forecasting point of view now, what does the company look like going forward? Well, the Motley Fool did a, um, a report, and I'll go ahead and share it with you here. The, the Motley Fool did a report yesterday after earnings came out, and they, they called it an all-in buy alert. And they said, why not Lincoln National is crashing today? And this was again yesterday on you know November third at one thirty p.m. and they listed three key points. Lincoln National dig deep into the red ink in the third quarter to get some painful accounting charges out of the way. Most of these added costs, however, are one-time charges that don't reflect the quality of the business. And that's again Motley Fool's opinion. And they go on to say risk tolerant investors may want to use today's steep sell-off as a buying opportunity. That's a decision. I'm going to let you make for yourself because Motley Fool issues a rare all-in buy alert. So they think this is an incredible opportunity. And they go on to talk about the fact that the company, you know, at that, at that time was down 32.5% in what can only be considered a disastrous third quarter report. Yet none of last quarter's massive loss reflects the organization's actual long-term operating viability. So for the three-month stretch ending at September, Lincoln National turned in $4.6 billion worth of revenue into a loss of nearly $2.6 billion, or as I re referenced earlier, a loss of $15.70 per share for the quarter. Now, according to, you know, facts that now, that drops the estimate down into a, a negative 3 or $4 a share. And again, this, these numbers are just coming in. You know, we're showing $4 on the historical graph. I do want to make a point here, though, on the forecasting calculator, there's $3.95, which is the actual estimate right now, but that's it's rounded to $4 on the historical graph. Now, you can see the estimates have gone from 967 to 865 to 817, and, you know, now they're, they came in at, for the quarter now, you know, with the $15 loss. The analysts are now expecting almost a $4 loss, but they are expecting a strong recovery next year. And there are 16 analysts reporting the facts that 
that are following the company. Now, I do want to point out the last time I last I looked just before I started this video, the analysts that you know are reporting to um, Yahoo, which I think comes from Reuters, they're looking for a negative three percent drop for this year. And next year, they're they're saying an increase of 29.7%. They think next quarter, they're going to be a 41% increase. But I want you to notice they're still showing the $7.95. I believe this will be adjusted. I don't think these analysts are still going to be reporting that. You know, by the end of the day, I think that number will come down. They expect $10.31 next year. So once again, we, you know, check that against what facts that is has gathered from the analysts that they've polled. And I want to make a point here, by the way. This is not what FastGraphs is saying. And this is really not what FactSet is saying. This is what 13 analysts that are reporting to FactSet, and then FactSet in turn are reporting to us what these analysts are saying they expect earnings to be for the year and what they expect earnings to be for next year. And the same is true as Yahoo. This is not our estimate. This is a collection of estimates from leading analysts that follow the company. The one thing I've been harping on lately is always check the analyst scorecard. And I want you to notice from an operating earnings point of view, the analysts have a pretty abysmal record. They've missed almost half the time on a one-year forward estimate, and they've missed about 38% of the time on a two-year forward estimate. This is with a 10% margin for error, and this is with a 20%. And I'm going to talk about margins for error for a moment. I don't want anybody um, being naive enough to be thinking that these numbers are going to come in perfectly. Okay, the odds of that happening are very, very slim. As you can see by the analyst scorecard, that you know the the estimates have been way off in many cases. They missed it by 27 percent, missed it by 50 percent. And the reason I say this is this is a difficult company. If you read the earnings transcript, which I did, you're going to see there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of um, you know that they've got to do a lot of actuarial estimating on you know their products and how they're going to price their products and what kind of products they're going to bring out. So there's a lot to think about when you're dealing with a company like Lincoln National. But the bottom line is, the one thing that Yahoo is pointing out is that you now have an incredibly low valuation. If we did get this recovery, I want to emphasize if, what if, if we got this recovery and this thing traded at nine times 2023 earnings of over $10 a share, the rate of return from, you know, for the annualized rate of return for like a year and a quarter, a year and a couple months would be over 145%. And going out to 2024, it'd be averaging 73% annualized. So there is the big opportunity, and that's looking at a very low valuation. If you were looking at what a normal valuation would be something like 15 times earnings, then the numbers would be just you know astronomical. Now, how realistic is all that? Well, the reality of it is, I think the nine times earnings for this company is what you really want to hang your hat on because, you know, that's how the market's been valued. That that's the multiple of the blue line here on this long-term graph, 9.6 times earnings. All right. And that's where the, you know, the market has normally valued it. Now we get no blended PE ratio now because we have negative earnings and obviously you can't, you know, calculate something on a negative number like that. But looking out a year ahead, you know, at a nine times earnings, that would that would indicate a ninety nine. We'll call it a hundred dollar a share stock that you can buy today at thirty four point eight three. Just to put that into perspective, so there is a big opportunity here if you're willing to take the risk. But keep in mind, there's a lot of ifs involved in what this company is going to do going forward. Now, taking a look at some of the other aspects of the company, just to be you know, clear, if I look at gap earnings, diluted earnings, they're actually better. They're slightly positive for the year. And again, the company looks, you know, very attractively priced based on gap earnings. Operating cash flow has been abysmal here the last couple of years through COVID. And COVID is a risk that I think is worth mentioning, you know, what's going to be happening to all the actuarial assumptions that all these insurance companies are making as a re result of the aftermath of COVID and even some of the adverse reactions of things like the vaccines and so on. Free cash flow is also abysmal right now and free cash flow to equity is abysmal right now. So, you know, we're, they are generating some and they are expecting it to recover. But again, there's a lot of ifs in this company. And I, again, I don't follow it. 
Um, from a sales point of view, the one bright spot here, their revenue side was good, but not great. In other words, they, they didn't really have a big drop in revenue. So let's go ahead and go into the financial statement. And all of the data has not come in to the financial statement yet. But let's go into the quarterly section on fast graphs here, looking at their financial statement. And you can see for, we do have some, we don't have all of the items yet to have come in. We don't have any balance sheet items yet coming in, but they will be coming in um, here, you know, very shortly, hopefully even by the end of today. But they, they did report $4.798 billion in revenues versus $5 billion last year, which is, uh, you know, not a real bad number. I mean, that's not horrible. They did report all these impairments and, you know, all these uh, write-offs that they're taking, non-recurring write-offs, as Motley Fool suggested. Um, so we're going to be getting more color on that as time goes on. But as we're looking at it right now, there is, in essence, a lot of risk that I think you should be aware of as investors. This company is not without risk. But the valuation, if any of these future numbers turn out to be even reasonably accurate, or even a lot lower than what these are saying, if we, even if they only earn seven or eight dollars a share instead of, you know, ten dollars a share like analysts are expecting in 2023, this would be a great opportunity to buy the stock. So is Motley Fool, you know, correct with their all-in recommendation? I don't know. I'm going to let you judge that for yourself. Another positive: the company did maintain their dividend. They they paid for they, they announced a 45 percent dividend. And if you read the earnings transcript, they talk about their commitment to the dividend and the share buybacks. And they've been doing a little bit of ship buying back shares, but not 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 a whole lot, frankly. So if I go into fixed fiscal fitness here and look at share buybacks, you can see they've been buying shares back for several years now. And um, as far as the um, the quarterly number for this year, um, for 922, they did buy, you know, a few shares. Let's drop this to the last six quarters or so. You can see that they they went from 171.6 to 171.1 million shares. So they did buy, you know, roughly a half a million shares for the the last quarter. So you know that that is a positive. The company is, um, you know, doing all they can to reward their shareholders. The company is upbeat about what they think their future is going to be. But I do want to remind you, a lot of that has to do with, you know, them being correct on some of their actuarial assumptions. Anyway, um, this is a stock that you want to invest at your own risk level. If you're a true value investor looking for a speculative opportunity, Lincoln National may foot the bill. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of Fast Graphs. Um, a special request on Lincoln National here. hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I think there's a opportunity here, but it's not an opportunity that's without risk. So I think you need to do your own homework and due diligence. There's a lot of information beginning to come out on the company and more will come out in the next couple of days, I'm sure. So take a look at that and do your own homework. If you like this video, give me a like, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And again, Fastgrass is such a wonderful tool to help you be better long-term prudent investors. You know, it's the easiest way to value a company that I know of. So I hope you take a look at the FastGraph research tool as well. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys again real soon.